salute to you and your Red Cross, an especially transcribed salute starring Bob Hope with Les Brown and his orchestra, Jack Kirkwood, High Aberback, and Bob's special guest, Ava Gardner. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob's arrival here at Fort Wyoming. The climax is a long day that started when he drove out to Metro Golden Mayor Studios in Culver City this morning to pick up Ava Gardner. We parked and walked over to the main entrance. Gee, MGM is really a big studio, isn't it, High? And look at that big billboard there with a picture of Ava Gardner. What was that? The MGM Lion. Oh, good. For a minute, I thought it was me. So, Bob, this is the reception office right here. Uh... Wait a second, High. I'll talk to this girl at the switchboard. MGM, one minute, Mr. Green, I'll connect you. Oh, excuse me, miss. Oh, you're Bob Hope. Ava Gardner's expecting you. Go right in. Oh, thanks. Well, hi, you may as well go right on to Port Wainimi. I'll take Ava in my car. Okay, so long, Bob. Gee, MGM sure has a lot of star. There's Spencer Tracy and there's Deborah Carr. Well, here's a couple of visitors from my studio coming toward me, Ray Milan and Fred McMurray. They'll sure be glad to see me. Hi, Ray. Hi, Fred. they both tie their shoelaces while they're still walking. <laughs> well, I guess Ava's dressing room must be over this way. I wonder... Right over here, Bob. I'm waiting for oh, you. Oh, hello, Ava. Ava, you're looking wonderful. Well, thank you. You're looking even prettier than you did the other night at the photographer's ball. Oh, wasn't that fun, Bob? And weren't the costumes original? You know, I thought the simpler ones were better. Wasn't you and Allison cute as little Bo Peep? Yeah, and how about Gary Cooper? He put two coat hangers in his hair and came as a TV aerial. <laughs> you know, there were a lot of Alice in Wonderland costumes. Oh, and that reminds me, Bob. What? Well, how did you know I was coming as a green frog? Well, what makes you think I knew? Well, you were the only one there that followed me around with a lily pad. Well, I did that in self-defense. Well, Bob, I think we'd better get started. Uh, it's quite a way to put my in. Here's my car, Ava. Get in. Not a truck, it's a car. <laughs> Betty, somebody may be listening. Betty. <laughs> Bob, please don't drive too fast while you're on the lot. There are a lot of people crossing the street. Oh, look, there's Red Skelton. Gee, I think he's a funny comedian. Bob, be careful! Bob, you came within an inch of hitting Red. I know, that shows how the smog can spoil your aim. Bob, I don't know why you hate all other comedians. Well, it's mutual. After Red saw my TV show the other night, he greased my front porch with chicken fat. <laughs> I found it for ten minutes just picking up the morning paper. Bob, you know we got quite a drive ahead of us. Why don't we stop here at the studio restaurant and get a cup, cup of coffee first? Okay, you want a cup of coffee? That's fun, do you? Know. <laughs> See the kind of thing, Cottage? Hey, let's sit over here. Hey, look, Ava, there's Gene Kelly going over to that long table. Gee, and with a cream pitcher on his head. Yeah, wasn't that wonderful? Well, if you think that's great dancing, Ava, watch this little exhibition I'm going to put on. Now, Bob, please, don't do anything that might be embarrassing. You know, you're not quite as young as Jim. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. This is my chance to audition for all these big producers here. Wait till they see this. I'm sorry, if stand still and I'll scrape off the mustard.
corporal who raced to a waiting plane and the Red Cross field director who got him there. The telegram for the corporal had arrived only 10 hours ago. Mother critically ill, it said. Trouble was the corporal was on maneuvers in the forest with no communications. Plane reservations, lead papers, transportation funds had been simple compared to just finding the guy. Part of the search had been by jeep, part on foot, part in his belly, crawling through tangled brush and dodging live ammunition. The ride back still made the Red Cross field director shudder. 60 miles in less than an hour and a half. I don't know whether the corporal knows or not, but it was because of you that he got home in time. Because of your contributions that kept the Red Cross at his side. There are lots more I'm sure you'll want to help too. Veterans, for instance, whose tour of duty is now a hospital bed. The Red Cross does for them what you would do if you were there. Won't you answer the call and give generously now? And now, folks, we find Bob and Ava driving along the famous Pacific Coast Highway on their way to the naval base at Port Wainimi. To pass the time, they're playing the game of spotting license plates on the out-of-state cars. Well, there's one from Alabama, Bob. That's the first Alabama plate we've seen. Okay, that's a point for you, Ava. There's one from Tennessee, and look, there's one from Idaho. Oh, gee, here comes a car with no license plate at all. And the whole front crushed in, and it's traveling on three wheels. Well, we must be getting close to Port Wainimi. <laughs> Here they use bulldozers, you know. <laughs> talk about the program at Port Wainwright. What part am I going to play? Well, don't worry about that, Ava. It's the fact that you're there that's the important thing. They're always... <laughs> anyway, but tonight we're going to do a classical play on the show, Guinevere and Galahad. You're Lady Guinevere, and I'm Sir Galahad, the famous knight of the round table who slays a thousand dragons. Well, it certainly sounds different. How do you know these boys at Port Wine will like to play about dragons? Well, you should see some of the dates they take to the dance on Saturday night. <laughs> Here, Ava, read the part of Lady Guinevere, will you? All right. Ah, Galahad, how fortunate is the woman who gains thy favor. How perfect a specimen of manhood thou art. How noble thy brow. How graceful thy cheek, how broad thy shoulders, and how mighty thy arms. Isn't it lucky I was around when they were casting this? <laughs> I got a whip over my writers, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, go on, Ava. Okay. Ah, oh, Galahad, tell me. Hey, hey, look at that guy waving his thumb right out in the middle of the road. Well, pick him up, Bob, he looks tired. Okay. Hey, you, are you a hitchhiker? How do you think I got these tire marks across my chest, boy? <laughs> okay, get in. Thank you, folks. It's 15 miles of Wainimi, and I got to get there as fast as possible. I'm deeply grateful to oh, you. Oh, don't mention it. Now, don't mind me. Just go right ahead with whatever you were talking about. Ah, Galahad, let me hear from your lips the tale of your brave exploit. I fear that thou wilt think my story fanciful, but my way to your castle was beset by many dangers. With my faithful sword, I slew a three-headed dragon breathing sheets of flame from each nostril. Let me out of the next corner. You got a worse hangover than I have, boy. Get out of the car. Oh, now, boy, I didn't mean any harm. If I offended you, I'll apologize. As the Italians put it, Ravace signorale, con buon ravato graziano bueno signor. Oh, well, that's different. You can get back in the car. Gee, that was a beautiful Italian quotation and so poetic. Just exactly what does it mean? Well, I'm not sure, boy. I read it on the back of a macaroni truck. <laughs> Get 
Yes, you go a little faster. If there's anything I hate, it's a slowpoke driver. Now, look, one more word out of you, and I'm going to punch you right in the eye. Oh. Now, now, don't get your feathers ruffled. That's pretty big talk for a fella your age. Listen, I've heard enough cracks about how old I am, too. Hey, here's my driver's license. Just read to him my right age. All right. But you give me the wrong one, Bob. This hmm? isn't your California license. It isn't? No, this one says, Military Vehicles Only. Signed, General George Custer. <laughs> Get out! Get out! Huh? You heard me. Get out! Okay, okay, but I couldn't help laughing. Get out, that's okay, It's the funniest thing that's happened to me since last week at a party when I pulled the rug out from a big fat fellow named Bing Crosby. Get in. to get to Port Wine. We could travel a little faster to oblige you, couldn't we? Yeah, step on it, boy. I'm going faster. There, I'm up to 50, 60, 65. Oh, man! Bob, let me talk to him. Oh, officer. What do you want? Officer, I'm sure we weren't going very fast. And besides, your big blue eyes weren't made for watching cars. They were made for looking to other big, beautiful blue eyes. Weren't they? Whoa. You see, Ava, you're not getting anywhere with them. Ava! Hey, you're Ava Gardner, aren't you? That's right. Boy, is this my lucky day. I can get a promotion for this. Captain Flanagan is celebrating his anniversary, and if I bring you over, there will be a sensation. Come on, let's go. Just a second, just a second. Now I'm going to have my say. Ava Gardner happens to be on my nationwide broadcast tonight, and she has a very important part in the play. I've got some important friends in Wyneme myself, and if you try to keep her from appearing in that play, I'll show you which one of us packs the most weight around here. <laughs> Sweet, sweet Lady Guinevere, how brightly the moonlight dances in thy raven hair. I, Galahad, lay my heart at your feet. Now that I can at last claim a kiss, will it fulfill my dreams? What will your kiss be like? Well, it won't be like Ava, boy. show a transcribed salute to you and your Red Cross, starred Bob Hope with Les Brown and his orchestra, Jack Kirkwood, High Aberback, and Bob's guest, Ava Gardner. This program was directed by Al Capstaff and was made possible through the cooperation of the Advertising Council, the American Federation of Musicians, the American Federation of Radio Artists, and the Radio Writers Guild. <laughs>